Hey guys, JC Smith here. Uh, giving the great all some attention again today, uh, having more starter troubles. Um, so today it's something a little bit different. When we had the starter before, um, the starter solenoid would click, but nothing would happen. We knew we had uh, power across it, but it just wouldn't start. So um, what we have now is sometimes you hit the key and just nothing happens. You don't hear a click, you don't hear anything. Um, so we're going to check out the solenoid real quick and then see what we got going on. This is a two post solenoid if you don't understand if you don't aren't familiar with these solenoids all they are is a big relay basically um, we have battery power on this terminal and then it comes out to here and we have on this side a negative and a positive which go into a coil okay you have we have a, a ground on this one usually all the time and then we put momentary power to this one to energize the coil when it does it moves a basically a rod that makes contact the rod comes down and makes contact from this terminal to this terminal okay and that's all a relay really is you're using a lower amperage or lower voltage to control a higher amperage or higher voltage okay so what we want to do is first off we want to see if we have power so we're going to check this ground right here to make we're going to check two things at once if it's if it works okay and by, by putting this on the ground and then if i touch this to the battery that tells me both end connections are good okay uh in a quick test that tells us that we do have power we do have ground now what we want to do is, my wife's in the cab, she's going to hit the key. Go ahead. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. we got nothing coming through there. Um, now, that tells us we don't have a signal to it. All right, so now we got to backtrack. Um, before, what we had is that the solenoid would click, and it would make, uh, it would make um, contact through and energize the solenoid on, because there's actually another starter solenoid on the starter but the starter wouldn't do anything it the starter wouldn't even click so now we got to go back inside the cab and we'll have to see coming out of the starter what we have because it's been really acting weird like um, it's, it starts much faster it cranks faster here hold that um, but it now it's something it, it won't do anything so it goes from the ignition switch into this which is our forward reverse and neutral okay so it has to be in neutral and then there's a brake switch right here which you can hear that's a two position switch it has uh, front brakes only or front and rear brakes okay and the way that works is when that switch is on it makes it makes a uh, closed circuit and lets the signal go from the starter to the uh, uh, starter solenoid so let me get in here and get it all set up and I'll see what we can find out Okay, so the first thing I'll do is I will turn the key on, which I just did, and I'll check every single fuse, okay? Um, doesn't matter if it's what it's for, I just make sure they're all good. Apparently my ground is less than great. Keep wiggling that. Um, of course, now I'm doing it one-handed, but there is enough room in here for two of us, but anyways... Uh, I've checked all these, all the fuses through here are good. So the next thing I'm going to do for ease of video is I'm just going to take the ignition switch loose here and I'll pull it down and show you what I'm going to do. So let me get that out. Okay, so I have the starter switch out, you know, the ignition switch. Um, now, this wire right here is a constant battery positive that comes in. And I've got my test light hooked to a, uh, a good ground and we have power coming in. Now, because of what this is, this switch, this engine only needs um, power to the ignition, coming out of the ignition side of this, for cranking um, to engage the starter, and then one constant on to turn the fuel on. That's all it requires to start. So this is the ignition, what they call the starter wire right here. This is momentary power to that, that uh, solenoid that I showed you, so I'm going to try and turn this and show you okay there's a key on which should give me yeah look there's my on that's probably my gauges and stuff and there's pro that's accessories and now I should be able to let's see if I can get on this good tighten up my test light there let's see if I can get on here and now the blinking you're seeing can you hold on to that switch mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to hold on that switch, and now, it is kind of dirty, but 
I don't know if that's coming in good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you hold it on there good and tight, there's no... It comes right on and right off steady. What, the little blinking you saw was us moving around. Okay, so we have power coming out of it, out of this, the switch. Uh, the next stop is the electric brake. Now, the electric brake is a single throw, double pole switch. Now, what that means is it has two sets of contacts coming in. And depending on which position you put the key in will dictate what is actually going on. Um, where it sends the power that it's bringing in or ground, whichever you're trying to control. Um, so I pulled that out because that's the next stop. Okay. Now this is a solenoid. Let me get that switch here. It's kind of dark in here. It'd be nicer if I took this black glove off, maybe. Maybe I'll see a little better. Yeah, there it's a little better. Okay, so there it is. You see all the contacts on it. The centers in this application is power coming in. One is for the starter, and the other is for the uh, electric brake. So what they've done is, in order for the starter to get power from the ignition switch, it has to come through this switch. But this switch has to be in the position that turns on the parking brake, which is what this is. Because we have a little little indicator light on top of the dash, little white light right there, it says four by four. That lets us know the ignition switch is on, and for whatever reason, that's tied into the electric brake. Um, that comes on when the brake's on, for whatever reason. So, um, now, that's in the on position, so when we hit the starter, the switch, test light. We should have power coming in. And we do. Now, we have to see if we have power coming out. This is the ignition switch side. Okay, so here's the out terminal, which this isn't easy. Wow, I got this pretty tight in here. Nothing. Okay. So being we have nothing coming out, that leads me to believe that this switch, the contacts, are bad. Okay, so what we'll do is if I jump her, can you see that terminal in there? Get that, this switch. If I jump her this terminal to this terminal, it should crank. Okay, so now we we're gonna jump her this terminal right here. We're gonna go from the ignition coming in to what should be this. I'm gonna try it one more time. Okay, nothing. For test, hold that. So for testing the switch, we got nothing. It's not doing anything. Now, go back here to my terminal. I'm going to hold that on here. And look, I have it. Works every time. And this is the terminal coming out. All right. We have nothing. I can move that switch anywhere I want it, and I won't get power coming out of that. There's the momentary, or the uh, that would be the front brakes only. And then this one is off in this position or this position it should start and it doesn't we get nothing okay so now if i jumper this these two terminals and i hit the start button which is basically bypassing this switch if the neutral safety switch is good then this will fire And there you have it. It cranks every time. So that tells me that this switch is no good right here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, I believe this is the same as a, a Meyer snowplow switch for your headlights. I believe it's the same identical switch. I'll check because uh, Meyer's headlights use uh, two powers coming in um, for high beam and low beam. They interrupt them and they put them on each, whether it's a truck or the plow. And I believe this is the same. So I'm going to, let's see, I'm looking at numbers here. I'm going to go see if I have one. It's just a 10 amp switch. This is funny. 10 amps at 277 volts AC. Yeah, we're well below that. So um, I'm going to grab some tools and see if I find one. We'll bring you back. Okay, so um, I was mistaken. This is not the same as a Myers snow plow. I was thinking it would double pull it, but this one has a, a three position 
so it's not the same so I have to order it um, for right now I'm going to bypass this switch so I can continue to use this um, and make sure everything's okay but uh, once the uh, once the new switch comes in um, we will uh, go ahead and change it out so um, that'll be that so I'm gonna do that and then uh, we'll call this good because that's about fixed I don't need to make a video showing you guys how to change out a switch with all these terminals on it because you know what we'll do we'll do one at a time so we don't screw it up so uh, I'll do that and uh, I guess that'll be it for this one we'll catch you on the next one hey there mrs. JC Smith here uh, so it's time to put the lawnmowers away for the year and uh, the battery was dead and he didn't want to jump the battery so this is what he's doing to bring it over here I'm sure the neighbors think we're crazy but he did already have the grate all down there so I guess I guess it makes sense plus he just likes to play Delivered, don't you, you don't you like to just play? Huh? <laughs> don't you like to play with stuff? Play? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, this is my big timber. Yeah. That's so it doesn't bend it up and scratch it. <laughs> well, that works. Now we just have to make room for it. The boom is a little too tall for the roof. Yeah, I think that's. Uh, I guess I'm farther away than I thought. But yeah, but before you lowered it, it, it would have hit. Yeah. So. That's close enough. All right, we'll just roll it in. What do you think? No, you don't. Because we use it like every day. Huh? We use it almost every day. Yeah. I wonder if we need it if we move. Yeah. We need it for we sure. Do. Yeah. I thought you wanted to move and things were simpler and less stuff to do and all Yeah. That. Things I want things simpler but You still want to play trucks? If we're gonna Still build a truck? cabin or something still want to play trucks? you're gonna you're gonna play trucks no matter where you're at I know you right. we need that for the boss, guys. we do and we need the skid steer too remember you before before you had this you had a backhoe and tracking, and tracking with loaders. yeah but these well we're probably gonna need a backhoe well we could get it and then and a tracker, and sell too. it I thought you wanted things simple. 
Well, I do. I simply want all the tools I want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure you do. So we need the skid steer. We need the grade all. We'll have to have the freight liner to move the skid steer, to move the backhoe, to move the track hoe. Um, and we'll have to have lumber. You know, Unless so we, we make our own. Huh? Unless we make our own. Oh, well, yeah, we could make our own. From oh, our land. Oh, so we need a sawmill. From our. We have to build a sawmill. Well, from our 100 acres that I'm, I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Hey, you got a dream. Well, if you want 100 acres, I need to shine up some pennies. As a matter of fact, I need to find a penny for us to make some. I think you better make uh, more than pennies. <laughs> well. <laughs> I suppose I could sell off a couple of trucks. 